Hey, I'm finally back for a live stream. I'm gonna be working on some drawings today. Uh, both are gonna be gifts for friends of mine. Uh, holiday themed, leading towards Christmas. Uh, like this picture's uh, for a good friend of mine of his character Andy the mouse, um, being greeted by his niece and nephew. That's always fun. And I have this other one that's a bit closer to finished. Because uh, the other like ugly Christmas sweaters, and um, but there's also that I've been kind of looking into are like the goofy Christmas socks. So I gave uh, my good friend Syndrome's Ratty Syndrome character, um, who's buddies of my Wolfski character on the right here, and just kind of look, looking at some sock designs and having fun with those. Like when I was like really cute one of snowmen here kind of gave those to my wolf ski and just just really kind of having a little fun here and there so um for this one I haven't added any shading so I'll see if I can add some shading later but it's mostly done I just want to keep it simple for this one um and really just kind of show off like fun sock designs yeah that's too, that's too thick alright This one I have a lot of work to do for that, and I'm on, I'm gonna I left this sweater blank here because I want to give him the similar sweater design to this picture I did of the character last year as well. You can see Ratty Syndrome and my wolf ski and um, D and the alien and uh, Max the adventurer, all friends characters. Uh, yeah, and I want to see if I can do something more kind of like like the general Christmas theme picture eventually. But for right now I'm trying to get these f gifts for friends done and seeing what I can do a little later. But Chris is approaching just over a week away. So yeah. Hope you got your shopping done to some mine today. Had really good weather. Finally put up the Christmas lights even though should have done that earlier, but we had bad weather the last couple weekends uh, in my neck of the woods. So today the weather was finally agreeable. So it was a perfect opportunity to get that finally done. Um, I love the Christmas lights. And the tangly bit's always annoying, but after that, it's it's fun. I try not to get smacked in the face with trees, with tree branches and all and all that. So, yeah. Been listening to a lot of Vocaloid music lately. And some Christmas songs. Um, so it's kind of interesting because like there's this one radio station where I live that plays Christmas songs every like around the time of year, it's like constantly. Um, and I really okay. So when I was younger, I, I always said I love Christmas music, and to a degree that's still true. But nowadays, I'm much more selective in which Christmas songs I actually like and which ones I'll just turn the turn the dial on. Like just like nope, not listen to this. Um, I don't know what it is, but I think it's like like kind of like the I'm not sure what kind of genre it is exactly, but kind of like the whatever genre rap, rocking around the Christmas tree and Jingle Bell Rock. Cause I don't know if that would be under the rock umbrella of music, but I just can't get into those songs anymore. And I kind of never actually liked Jingle Bell Rock when I was younger either. I, I, or maybe I kind of did at a point, but maybe even then it was an ironic like to that song. But I just don't care for that one. Um, only enough, um, some of the Christmas songs I like are kind of like the more, like, religious leaning songs. Okay, religious and theme, but I don't like them so much for the theme as much as just how, um, how good the melodies are. Like, oh, like, Oh Holy Night, um, uh, Oh Holy Night. Like, that's a big one. Um, Silent Night's always good too. But just like just they're just songs that just sound good. Just you know, no, like whatever the theme is, like the song the songs sound like they sound pretty. So, and then of course you know the like more general ones like Sleigh Ride. I oh, I like that one a lot. Um, Winter Wonderlands, light and bouncy. Um, Oh, another one I don't like very often. I don't know who sing. Well, 
A lot of people have covered it, I should say. A lot of people have covered it, and I can't really find a version I like. But mostly because the most famous version, I think, by Bean Crosby, is just I've never really jived with. And that's, um, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, specifically for one reason. And it's always this, like, the same thing happens no matter what the cover of the song is. I don't know what, what it is about this song, it's kind of, they just, it's just how it's, how it's written and how, like, the meter goes in the song. But whatever they say, it's like, this, like the line they say, it's beginning to look like, a lot like Christmas. The way they, the inflection they have on Christmas, specifically I think it's Bean Crosby, I might be wrong on who it is, but it's like one of those, um, cooners who sings the song. And... It's just like the song, like he just, in the flexion, it's like, he goes, Christmas, and I just, it just like hits my ear in just like the wrong way, and I'm like, ooh, no, I do not like this. So, yeah, just something about that song I don't like, specifically that version. And then Michael Buble does like, he covers every Christmas song pretty much. Um, I don't like his either. Um, he's just, it's kind of funny, I was like, I'll never hear his voice throughout the entire year, and then suddenly, November, December, I finally remember, oh, he's kind of a thing, or was a thing at least, and now, yeah, this is one of those that kind of definitely famous for Christmas. Oh, also, I, um, I absolutely love um, Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You. That's all-time classic, hands down, classic, love it. Um, yeah. What kind of Christmas songs do you all like? Just let me know in the comments, and the stream, if you're watching live. Um, Christmas songs are nice. Or well, they can be nice. It could be like complete garbage, like um, all the way for Christmas or two front teeth. That one's just put that one in the bin. Go away. That one's bad. Um, creepy too, because that's a totally a grown man making that child voice. It's just like no, no. <sighs> So I hope everyone's having a good weekend. Now I've been away for a while, just kind of doing this and that. And month of November being kind of tense and all. Uh, but yeah, just keep on moving forward, despite you know, you know, things that might be kind of getting in the way, and you know, things of scheduling and holidays, family time, friend time. I'm just really trying to get to, to streaming. Did get a lot of games on sale on Steam recently for Black Friday that I'm gonna try to make time to sh stream. At least I'd like to, some of them. Like, I finally, finally got Ukulele. And I know, like, I've, I've, ru I've watched so many reviews, I've heard a lot that it's just not that great. But I really wanna try it. Um, just, I just really wanna try it. So hopefully, it's good. Well, at least hopefully I'll I'll get a kick out of it. I hear it's okay. So, at best, okay. Some limiting factors and problems that kind of it just didn't improve on some of the issues that the genre had back at its height. So like kind of a spiritual. So it's, 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 it was, um, Bill was a spiritual successor to, to Banjo-Kazooie, and I love the Banjo-Kazooie games. I, I mean, I, the only one I didn't play was, um, Grunty's Revenge for the Game Boy Advanced, or, I think it was Game Boy Advance. That's the only one I didn't play. I actually did play, um, uh, Nuts and Bolts, and thoroughly enjoyed it. That was a fun game. I know, complete genre shift, and pretty an appropriate genre for shift at that, but it was still fun. I, I enjoyed it and just got to see those characters I adore and just that was an extraordinarily vibrant wor world that the game took place in. I mean, I will admit some of the game, like some of the um, level worlds you visited, were unnecessarily large and empty in some bits. Um, like really empty, but um, <laughs> but still very fun to look at. And we did get like into a mission that took advantage of some of the air, like parts of that, parts of those levels that, you know, did have stuff in them. They were quite good. But there are two levels in particular that I posit were kind of very lackluster. One was the arena level, or the coliseum level, whatever. I don't know the exact name of it, but 
like Jiggle C. I don't know what it was called, but um, mostly because that one was kind of just you know they had a big coliseum and they put anything in it. So when no nothing specific was going on, there it just was this huge empty arena that you just flew around in. It was like, mm. and then the other one was um. Well, it wasn't uncreative, it just kind of felt the same after a while. It was the one that took place inside of a giant CPU. Um, it was cool at first, but then it just kind of got like, eh, it's, everything in this level looks the same. Um, so that one got a little, a little boring. But the other levels I really adored. But the Alien, well, the Alien one was kind of where, like, the difficulty, the difficulty shot, yeah, the difficulty spiked up in that Alien one, and then it was like, ooh, this is, Kind of annoying. Well, it goes a little really easy to fall down these huge atriums and just like ugh. you have to get all the way back up and it's just then parts of your vehicle will just scatter when you hit the ground. It's just, it was a mess. Um, yeah, I love the first level, Nutty Acres. I absolutely love the museum level. That one's just absolutely gorgeous, nostalgic trip. Um, yeah, those are definitely the highlights. And then the hub world I absolutely adored. So the, just so... I, 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 I liked, I thought I had a lot of character. Um, I really should play that again someday, because I never actually finished it. I got to the final boss and then stopped for whatever reason, but I should get into it someday. I will admit that... Well, it did bring back a lot of recurring characters that were, you know, good in the original games, and were still good in this game. The, the new characters they made for this game kind of sucked. I mean, it really sucked. I mean, Trophy Thomas it, it at least looked cool, but he had a garbage personality. Just complete garbage. So. And everyone has problems with Log. I didn't have problems with Log, but I understand why people had problems with Log. Oh, that's just such a that's just a franchise that's just been locked away for a long time and who knows what's gonna happen to it. Especially because there have been, you know, those franchise revivals lately, like Spyro got one recently, uh Crash Bandicoot got one. Ooh, I got the end tri oh, that's another game I got on Steam sale was the the Crash Bandicoot Insane trilogy, so ooh, looking forward to getting giving that taking a crack at that one, because I haven't played those original three Crash Bandicoot games in years. I was like going along the sketch, not really kind of choosing a specific place to work in. Kind of traveling along, going where my pen takes me. Follow the pencil lead road, or pencil graphite road, more accurate. Though the extra syllables doesn't really roll off the tongue as neat.
let's see what's going on here. I might have to do some a lot of like fixing of this line art because the sketch was pretty rough. I'll have trouble trying to get this sketch to look kind of like what I had in mind. Can't really find a good reference for it either. So I'll see how this goes. I just really kind of want to keep it simple too. Because I have quite a few pictures I want to get done this month and several of those I want to get done before Christmas. Include one of the pictures I want to do which might have to wait till after Christmas is um, an entry for the character design reference contest. I always forget the exact how that name is supposed to go, but the theme for this month is Pokemon, and I love Pokemon, so it's like you could do Pokemon redesign or Pokemon fan art, so I'm going to really enjoy that. And I already have an idea in mind that I want to try, so I hope I can get that sketch soon and see if that's an idea I want to continue with or if I want to try a different one. I really did enjoy the heck out of Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. I finished that a bit ago and um, just trying to get the Pokedex finished at, at my leisure and getting some Pokemon in there from Pokemon Go and just having a lot of fun. Just I love I love Kanto and I'm glad I got to revisit it in 3D. Um, and the game does have some issues, specifically the catching mechanic, which is kind of frustrating at times, but I really like the game and how, how like the kind of the additions they added to the story some extra character moments and I just love Kanto and I love that score for that game and how they re redid the songs with um, orchestral instrumentals I just loved it so much so So it's worth checking out. I mean, if you find it on sale, it, you'd be in bear, but it's a very, very fun. And a good thing to tide you over until the next Pokemon game, which hopefully is coming out next year, from what I heard. They're going to have something planned for 2019. Do here in the sketch. Uh, oh, oops, got to my chat window open. Okay. So bad with arms. All right.
Oh, all right. Just checking some messages in my chat window on my other screen. All right. So what was it doing? Oh yeah, this part. Arms. Ugh, arms. Keep this stream a bit short, holiday time and all that. Oh, hello Stardust Dude 52, how are you doing tonight? Thank you for stopping by the stream, just working on some holiday pictures, getting into the season feeling holiday mood and all. Alright. Let's see if I get the collar of her shirt here. We're really need to practice female characters more. Oh, happy holidays to you too. What's new with you? Everything's going well. They've been having a good Saturday. My Saturday's been pretty good. I was mentioning earlier that I um, finished putting up the Christmas lights outside. It took me so long because um, it was long to get to it because we had some bad weather the past few weekends where I live. I would, feel, I would have felt so guilty not putting up Christmas lights. So I'm glad I got some some set up. I have set up most of our little ones we have. I also got uh, tossed out some old ones that just don't work anymore. That's one thing that's really easy to accidentally hoard. It's, it's really easy to hoard Christmas lights. Oh yeah, storm. Oh, sorry to hear that. Hope you're doing okay. You know, we had a bit of a, not really a storm, just really bad winds the last couple days. But uh, winds kind of calmed down. It's actually very nice today. For here. Oh, you do like this. Oh, oh, you do like the snow. That's good. Yeah, snowstorm. What kind of things do you like to do in the snow? Any snowball fights, snowmen, or is that one of those kind of TV things that people that you see people do in the snow on TV, but people don't actually do in the snow when they actually when it when they're used to the snow, like tourist attractions. Like you live in a town where there are tourist attractions, you never go to the attractions. Just the people who come to visit your town go to those attractions. It's kind of a pattern I've noticed over the years. Because I live in a tourist town, there are a lot of things that I just didn't know were around and never bothered to visit. And then people visiting were like, oh, have you ever been to this place? I'm like, wait, that's a place here? <laughs> so yeah. I don't know that same, th same thing with snow. and People just kind of gone tired of the snow when they lived near it for so long. And then, you know, movies and television really glamorizing snow. Perhaps. You do snowball fights, make snow hearts. Oh, snow hearts. No men, sadly. Not sh 
not enough snow for that. What are snow hearts? And what's snow cream? Is that like a is that like I um a snow cone or something? Kind of curious what that is. I actually never heard of snow heart snow hearts or snow cream. Snow cream made with milk, uh, vanilla, sugar, and fresh snow. Pretty darn delicious. And a snow heart as well, just a heart-shaped snowball. Oh, that's cute. Wow, that sounds interesting. But I've never heard of snow cream. Hmm. I have to keep that in mind sometime. It's a very curious idea. Hmm. I do love ice cream. The snow cream might be actually pretty tasty. And I do quite like vanilla. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing, Star Dude. Oh, interesting. So snow cream is a thing from that they do in the Carolinas. Interesting. Oh, do I, you're asking, uh, do we have a lot of snow where I live? No. It hardly ever snows here. Every now and then, it might. 
Um, but very, very rarely does it ever snow. I live in a fairly warm kind of area. It did it did snow last winter. Um, that was a, a that was a treat to see. Um, but yeah, it doesn't happen too often. So right now I can say I like the snow, but I don't live in a place that I'd be I'd have gotten tired of the snow, so I do have that bit of luxury. I think that there's you know, some people who live in the Midwest, um like Chicago who just pe like just hate the snow. That's understandable when you, know, you get sick of it and then, you know, all the trouble that comes along with it. Shoveling driveways, sidewalks, snow banks, ice under the snow, hazards left and right. It's a challenge to deal with, and if it's a, and on a regular basis, ooh. And I live in a place that's so un that's so not used to snow that when it did snow, everyone had like people were like had no idea what to do. Like things were things were shut down the next day. They were like, ah, oh, what do we do now? Then a lot of schools got snow days, so you know, good for the kids. Well, the kids liked it, I should say. Oh, snow's very unusual, or you are too, star dude. Okay. Now, the Carolinas, I think, are fairly temperate. If I'm not mistaken. I've actually never been to the Carolinas, so I don't really have an eyewitness account for that. Oh. So when it snows there, like where he lives, it, it you know it's a disaster too. That's that's understandable. Yeah, snow. It's it's pretty and it has those fun activities you know tied to it, and a whole holiday theme. But for the people who actually have to experience it, either. It's a regular thing, and they they have to deal with all the repercussions that 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 it brings. Or it's so rare that people have no idea how to deal with it; and it causes a lot of problems. So, huh? Snow, quite glamorized. <laughs> Listen, <to> TV. <laughs> like Nightmare Snow too, and like disaster movies. Like that piece of garbage the day after tomorrow. I hate that movie so much. I just don't like say I hate a movie, but I just really hated that one. I never saw 2012, so I might hate that more because that's by the same, I think, um, director. I think, like, um, oh, what's the name? That like, what's that guy's name? He did that. He did um. The first Independence Day movie, like no, like for disaster. Roland Emmerich, yes, that's who it is. Okay, did that. He did that, nine, that disaster, the nineteen eighties, nineteen 
1998 um, Godzilla with the really bad CGI. Oh, oh you never seen the day after tomorrow, Star Dude? You're you're really not missing anything. It's just your by the book um, weather disaster movie. Like you get tornadoes in the west, snowstorms in the east, and all sorts of dumb characters. It is, it's, it's really not good. Very, yeah, very unimaginative. I mean, not unimaginative. Well, unimaginative in that you kind of see where everything's happening, like where everything's going to go in the story, pretty much. It has so many typical like movie cliches, like the inattentive dad, hero, main character, and the son who's disappointed in him, and then they you know connect through the disaster. Then there's the child in the hospital, and then just ugh, it's so so forced and uninspired. Yuck! Yes. Oh, yes. It's it's very yuck. I really ugh. Yeah, I mean, it follows pretty much all the beats of, like, a standard disaster movie slash Roland Emmerich movie. I haven't seen that Godzilla movie he did in a very long time. I know it's bad, but it kind of seems maybe interestingly bad from what I've heard. Maybe. Maybe in bits, but still not a good movie. So I might look into that and report back later. Speaking of movies, have you seen... Wait. Oh yeah, there's a Sonic movie coming up. I haven't heard much about it. I am curious about it and I'd like to see it. Um, mostly out of curiosity. I do have, you know, quite a bit of familiarity with the Sonic franchise. Um, certainly one of those franchises that's had a lot of ups and downs, some ups, some deep downs. Um, but yeah, I like to get a kick. I like to see it and see what they do with it. Um, I also really want to see the Detective Pikachu movie because I'm very curious. I want to see a lot of video game movies for the experience, and I, you know, they don't have a good reputation. I've seen some and. Yeah, that reputation is deserved in a lot of cases. Um, but I do want to give some more movie reviews for some of those classic ones. Classic in quotes. Um, like one movie I wanted to see in theaters I never got a chance to see. Because it was, took, it was taken out of theaters really quickly. Um, was the Ratchet and Clank movie. I really wanted to see that. And I still haven't seen it yet on home release. Uh, but that's on my to watch list. and probably do a classic review of that. Um, one of my long form reviews, which I haven't done in a long time. So, yeah, that's in the cards. Oh, yeah, there's something wrong when I see the Detective Pikachu movie. I mean, I'm, I'm very curious to see how it turns out. Because the trailer, you know. How should I say this nicely? I can't say it inspired confidence. And that'd be good. But it did... It was very intriguing to see how this is going to end. Like, how this is going to turn out, this movie. And I am kind of in the camp where no matter what, when I'm here... Ryan Reynolds' Pikachu, I'm just thinking Deadpool. I, I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm in that space right now, so. We'll see how that goes. I still, see De I still need to see Deadpool 1. I saw Deadpool 2, and I thoroughly enjoyed that, so.
I, I've, I've, I've confidence that Ryan Reynolds can do, do a good job. Um, well, in general, man, as Pikachu, ugh, that's a very much a will see situation. But yeah, I really haven't heard much about the Sonic movie, but I do want to see it. When it comes to the Sonic TV shows, they're, well, they're hearing this as well. Um, but at least they're entertaining for what they are. I actually really did enjoy the Sonic Boom cartoon. That, that I got a kick out of. Um, Sonic X was fascinating in just what they ended up doing with that. Um, just like the first two seasons are very mixed to bad, but I heard the third season's very good. I, that's the season I saw the least of back in the day. Um, I heard it's quite a step up from the first two. I just remember that character, Chris Thorndike, just, oh gosh, that character sucked. Remember him and his, um, his butler and maid? Like this, like, <laughs> His ethnic, his ethnic stereotype butler and maid. Like, well, yeah, they're two different kind of stereotypes. So very interesting takes on those characters. And how most of the Sonic characters that were in that show spent at least those first two seasons, the majority of the time, just sitting on couches, it seems. That's what I remember a lot of from that show, was just cream, Amy, cheese, and Tails just sitting on couches watching TV while Sonic sometimes did things and Chris Thorndike did more things or, and it just 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 dumb stuff like like Eggman running for president or something just it's just like it's a weird freaking show but not but not fun weird just just kind of Peculiar, more mostly at best peculiar, in, in that this this is really poorly handled, and I I just don't understand why. And then just the human characters were just like really drawn weird. I, I don't know why, but that, that just I I have to go into detail for that for and just kind of pose my thoughts for how bizarre the the human characters looked in Sonic X. Oh yes. Yeah, so. Star Dude 52, you're very correct. Sonic X was interesting. Yeah. I did enjoy when um Team Chaotix showed up in that show. They 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 did put a smile on my face when they appeared. I think they I only remember them in two episodes, one that was in season three and one that was in season two. And they were fun. That would they would have been fun to it would have been fun if they appeared in Sonic Boom. I don't know if they have or not, but they would have been in, I would have liked to see them because they cause Sonic Boom made a lot of its own characters. Um a lot of which are kinda crappy, but um still good. Like, the best part of Sonic Boom by far is Dr. Eggman. He is... Like, watch the show just for him. I mean, take or leave Sonic and the rest, but Dr. Eggman is the one to watch on so in Sonic Boom. Him and, um... His two hench robots, um... I forgot their names, but, I mean, they're they're a great duo. They're the same robots from, um... Sonic Colors. And they were good in that game, too. Uh, I was going to bother me, I forgot their names. I really want to say one of them was named Qbert, but I'm pretty sure I'm wrong.
Stardew 52 says, I need to watch Sonic Boom. I've heard some good things and meh things about it. Oh yeah, there are a lot of meh things about it. Mostly like the biggest meh thing about it are the townspeople. Like the townspeople suck. I mean, it's one of those shows where the where like the general townspeople are um are just um inattentive jerks who just kind of really cause a lot of their own problems or not worth saving. Kind of, kind of like that that problem that SpongeBob had, in like kind of like the mid season, like season five to eight, where the townspeople are just like mean spirited and stupid. Like Sonic Boom has a lot of episodes where the townspeople are like that. So they're that that are, they're very meh in a good on a good day. Like a lot of times you're like watching this show and you just be like like just like Sonic, don't save these people from Eggman. Just let them deal with them on their own because there's just they're just crap don't save them so you might get that reaction I want to watch more Sonic Boom. I think they got a second season. I only saw the first season. Oh, wait. Star Dude says, "Oh yes, Genji. Yes, I'm. I'm glad somebody else saw that Spun saw that about SpongeBob. The townspeople were such jerks. Oh, absolutely, they were horrible. I mean, there, there were a couple episodes where they were where it was especially egregious. One of them was um, someone's in the kitchen with Sandy." Where um, Plankton steals her fur because she can take it off like a coat or like a jumpsuit, and um, when she was just like in her bikini and helmet, people were just like laughing hysterically at her, despite like most char like most female characters and male characters on that show wearing swimwear like twenty four seven. So that was and, and just like really mean spirited and dumb comments. It was, it was uh, And then the, oh, one of the worst ones what was that one. Okay, Little Yellow Book. I don't know if you're familiar with that one. Is like I think that's a season nine episode where um um Squidward finds SpongeBob's diary and reads to the townspeople, and the townspeople flip on a dime. Like they were just like laughing hysterically at these personal diary entries that are embarrassing. And then when they find out that it that it was Squidward who stole the diary, then they're just all like hideously mean to Squidward on a flip and even though they're all guilty in reading the diary too and they're like they're just more mad at him for reading it than they are at themselves for also reading it it's just hypocritical jerks a lot of other words I could use there but I use jerks <laughs> oh yeah that episode made no sense whatsoever I agree well, both of those episodes made no sense. They were just, you know, terrible townspeople. Those are only two examples I can think off at the top of my head. I don't know if you have some more. Let me know if you have some more um, examples of townspeople and SpongeBob being terrible. I don't know if that's a trope either, because that's a thing too where the townspeople are just horribly mean and unsympathetic. And that's one of the reasons the movie, the. Disney CGI movie Chicken Little so hated is because it's a horribly mean spirited world of hideously mean um, townspeople. That movie's like terrible in a lot of ways, and that's one of the ways. Made fun of like Sandy for wearing a bikini, and I'm like, the place is called Bikini Bottom. What, what's this? And just yeah, it's no, make no sense whatsoever. Star Two Fifty Two says, yeah, a lot of 
new Spongebob fall into that category, I think. That's gotta be a trope. Oh yeah, the means towns people, yeah. Oh my gosh, Chicken Little, that poor dude caught a lot of flack for that. Oh, he so did. The worst part, though, was how terrible his dad was, just as a human, like, not a human being, but as a character, just horrible, horrible kind of person that just, ugh. I hear season 9, like most of season 9 and season 10 of Spongebob are marked improvements from season 5 through 8. Like season 9 still has like pretty bad ones. And I heard that there's one particularly bad episode of season 10. Um, I, haven't, I don't really, I haven't kept up with Spongebob much, I just kind of hear about it in passing. I've watched a bit here and there. Can't remember what the last episode I saw was. Like the last episode I saw in full. Oh yeah, Star Dude. I haven't seen SpongeBob in a while either. It's kind of hearing about it. I hear this episode in season 10 called My Leg, which is very good. Like, it's it's in the running for being a classic episode, um, or comparable to at least, like, the really popular episodes like Pancakes and Chocolate with Nuts. I haven't seen it, though, but I heard it's really good. So if you want to see, like, a more, like a modern sponsor episode that's actually good, that's one I've heard very... Uh, pr that's one I've heard praised very highly. So, called My Leg. Oops. Checking something. Oh, you've heard about the episode of My Leg, too. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I need to watch that one. Star Trek 52 is mentioning how the original creator, SpongeBob, uh, Steven Hillenberg, he did pass away recently, so it's very sad. Because he did, he, he stepped away from the show after the first movie, and then he returned, I think, in season 9 or so. Um, so, rest in peace. Sorry, Stardew 52. It hurt me too. That show, I did grow up with that show as well. Like those first few seasons, like that was, that was a time. It's 
Spongebob maybe may have inspired C-Punk, who knows? C-Punk in the 90s. Well, C-Punk from the 90s, but C-Punk does have a lot of 90s imagery. And Spongebob did, well, it's more like a 2000 show, but it did debut, I think, in 1999. 99 or 98, I think 99, though. Um, yeah. So no debut around the same time as Rocket Power. Rocket Power, like, fizzled out really quick, because that was... Such a cash grab show to try to cash in on, you know, the X Game craze and Extreme of the 90s. Even though it came out really late in, like, kind of the 90s Extreme time. Like, 90s Extreme time, I think, was more mid ish to late ish 90s. Like, maybe like 94 to 96, 7 or so. Maybe it extended later, because I know Goof Troop, no, um, not Goof Troop, but um, the second Goofy movie, like the extreme Goofy movie or whatever it's called, did a whole lot of X Game kind of tie and sort of deals too. At least that, like it was a kind of like, it was pretty much the X Games, so like the X Games for that universe or whatever that plot was. Um, but yeah, there's like a lot of skateboarding and, and skateboarding. Boy, Stardew 52 says, yeah, same. SpongeBob was a big part of my childhood. Seas Punk is a pretty nice thing. Um, would Flapjack count? Uh, I haven't watched much of Flapjack. I think it it does carry a lot of that, some of that aesthetic, too. Um, yeah, I haven't seen much of Flapjack. Just a, I made an episode here and there a long time ago. That's yeah, says, I like Rocket Power. I liked it too. Um, this is what Star Dude 52 is saying. He said, I like Rocket, I liked Rocket Power, but I gotcha. I also grew on as told by Ginger, but no one I know, like no one I knew knew or liked the sh that show. I remember as told by Ginger. I really enjoyed as told by Ginger. That was a pretty good Nicktoon. Um, oddly enough, it was when they kind of got a bad kind of showing in the U.S. Well, okay, very... I don't know what happened. Okay, this is an interesting story. It's going off on It's Told by Ginger. Is that... It had its initial run, and then there was a last season I never saw or knew about until years later, and it had a very sporadic... Like, like the episodes are out of order on weird days. This is That's Told by Ginger. And then it had a TV movie that never, I think I read, never aired in the U.S. That would have been the finale for the show. It, it aired in other countries, I think maybe Canada, but never in the United States, and I have no idea why. So, but yeah, I remember, I remember it was told by Ginger quite a lot. I still remember the theme song. I do remember the theme song as well from as told by Ginger. It was a good show. I really enjoyed it, and I, I still remember some scenes very vividly and just kind of some some quotes and just and just how it was a show it was an animated show from that era that had a very good parent character i given the kind of like it was like a very slice of life kind of episode like no it was a very slice of life kind of show and the main characters ginger and her brother carl um their mom lois i remember being particularly well written and and realistic and and a very good parent given her circumstances as a single mom working as a, a nurse which is a very um taxing job um yeah i really i really enjoyed the heck out of it told by ginger so you're not alone you're not alone star dude 52 in liking that show i i i liked it and remember it fondly i i haven't watched much of the that season that like the last season that they that the network was weird to or that finale movie um though i think in the finale movie i'm not sure but i'm pretty sure um how it part of how it how the show ends is um lois the mom marries that one doctor from the hospital she works um i think so because i remember in the show there were some ship teas between those two and there's that one particular episode where um, Carl was, he wanted to get, like, chin implants or something. I think that's what it was. And so, like, he went to, like, the, that doctor that Lois works with. And 
and the doctor was like kind of like humored him and kind of gave him like a prosthetic to use to kind of see how he'd work like he, he wouldn't give him the surgery he was just kind of like just did this thing to kind of get him to kind of you know just go along with this phase and then move past it um i remember that happening but i i really don't remember much from that show um but i think that's how like one of the things that happened in the finale movie was that the those two characters the mom and the doctor got married but I'm, i don't know for sure because i haven't seen it but i think i think i saw like a teaser for that somewhere um and i just remember there was a ship tease of those two together so that's just a guess like a very oddly educated guess with some flimsy memories that i may or may not have made up i don't know um long time ago yeah <laughs> huh What are doing here? Oh yeah. Yeah, I do remember Rocket Power as well. That show, gotta say, it didn't age the best. Um, it was also one of those shows that had um, a kind of a prick of a main character. Like, I never liked Otto. I thought he was just a big jerk. I liked Reggie, his sister. Twister was okay. I liked Sam. Um, I liked Tito, the Hawaiian guy that said things like that, said like ancient Hawaiian wisdom that was just somewhat. It was like I remember him. He was fun. And then they had the dad who was single and the mom. They didn't have a mom. I don't. I don't know what her deal was. And then the dad had this. He. He was friends with this policewoman who I think had a thing for him, but I don't think they were ever became. They never became. I'm. I'm pretty sure in one of the like TV movies he married someone else, but I remember like the kind of. Um, this policewoman had like a flirtatious thing with him. Um, I will always remember this. Like, um, like if the kids saw the policewoman, the policewoman would tell the kids in, in a very kind of sultry sounding way, "If you see Ray." tell him hey and I'm like what and just like, <laughs> I remember that happening it just and it was very for it seemed flirtatious to me but I might be misinterpreting it because it was a long time ago but yeah Rocket Power was an interesting show oh yeah Ginger was I agree Ginger as told by Ginger was mature for like along with the Klasky Koopa lineup it was fairly mature among those shows and then you also say from Rocket Power, Star Dude Fifty Two saying, Reggie was pretty cool. She was. Otto was great. Eh, he was okay. Raimundo was. Was that what his name was? I thought it was. His name was Twist. Well, his nickname was Twister. His real name might have been Raimundo. I don't remember what his real name was. Um. Oh yeah, I remember this. Um. Oh yeah, they did have neighbors like like the stuck up. Okay, the neighbors were like the. They had this this two two older couple couple who um they seemed like they were retired um okay there's this expression that um I don't know if it's this it I'm very just, I'm really distracted right now but there's this um this acronym for um that I don't want to I want to say the acronym first because I don't know if the name's been taken over by some something lewd. But it's like dual income, no kids, you know, shortened to dink. Which was like, actually like, that was used in, if you remember the 90s cartoon Doug, like early 90s cartoon Doug. He had these neighbors called the Dinks who were like these, um, these, these married couple who didn't have kids, but they were, seemed pretty well off. And, um, so that was like a, a, a in joke from that show that I didn't know about until years later. So I'm, I think that's what, um, the neighbors were because I don't remember them ever having kids, but there was Violet. The like, tell me if I'm right. Oh, Raymundo was a dad. Oh my gosh. Okay, I remember his red. I didn't know his full name was Raymundo. Like Reggie and Otto's dad from the show. That's what Star Dude Fifty Two is reminding me of. Like, that the, the dad was named Raymundo, but he was was called Ray by most of the characters. I think. Um, So like the, the the so like the guy was like that's like the typical like it was a very like there were a lot of cliches in the show but the 
the neighbors were like one um like the stuck up guy but the wife was really nice and kind of you know floaty and bouncy sweet woman uh, i think her name was violet and his name was merv i don't remember what their last names were um but they had that kind of deal where it's like it, i don't think they ever had kids they were older couples so they might have had kids that moved out but i really don't know um it was a while ago um if, if you if everyone wants to look that up and let me know i really appreciate that but yeah i remember a lot of weird tidbits huh all right i was doing something here <laughs> Yeah, the Dana rocket power was cool. And I have a theory about why there are so many single parents in cartoons. And if it's never explained, part of me thinks it mostly... <laughs> I think that there are a lot of these single parents in cartoons because the creators didn't want to have to bother with designing another character or casting another another person to voice that character and have to write for another character and that kind of keeps the cast smaller more manageable and the budget in check too so that's my guess i mean that's I, I, in particular i was kind of thinking about that one like watching steven universe which is a show i love but there were a lot of characters on the show that are like single parents with no explanation particularly the restauranteurs like fryman and uh, Kofi Pizza, where there's no Mrs. Pizza or Mrs. Fryman, and and it's also and that's also a show where at least in the case of the main character, him having a single parent is very plot relevant. While for these side characters, it's never even mentioned. So that's my guess is that there's only one parent in some of those families, because you know fewer characters to write for and hire voice actors for. That's really why I think that's the case why they have a lot of single parents. I know, specifically enough as told by Ginger, I remember that it was explained why Lois is a single mom, and that's because her and her husband divorced. Like, he does show up in an episode, like, I think, like, in one of Christmas, at least in one episode, in a Christmas episode, he shows up. Um, but yeah, they're divorced. Um, like, he's alive, just not around. Um... That's one of the few kids shows where I remember the main character's parents e even being divorced. Like, at least, car at least animated shows. I can't think of anywhere they're divorced or just not plot relevant. But they're specifically divorced, and that's told by Ginger. I forgot why, though. I think, I think Lois alluded to it once in a separate episode. I think he ran out on them think that's why he's not around and when you see him he's very nebbish so that's understandable like he reminded me a lot of um well in hindsight he reminded me of um in friends um phoebe's biological dad frank buffet when you do see him i get some vibes like there's like similar vibes from him and the dad is told by ginger so star dude saying Oh my gosh, you're right. Single parents everywhere. Yeah. That they are. I like it when it was like a thing in like Disney anime movies, that's like, you know, sympathy points. And then there there were times the only time it really bothered me that the parent like that okay. While there were dead parents was um and this show also this movie also bothered me in a number of reasons, which is why I never got way into it. I thought it was okay, but I was never blown away by it. It was um, Big Hero Six. Because it is absolutely gratuitous that the parents aren't around because they live with their aunt and there's absolutely no difference. There would be no difference in the writing, I think, if the parents were there instead of the aunts or one of the parents. Like, there would be no difference because the aunt plays such a minor role in the entire movie. And because of what happens in the movie and the... Because there's another loss in the movie. If you haven't seen the movie, just like there's another loss like early in the movie that would have it would have gone down the same for the main character, like his whole 
arc would have been the same if the parents were there or not. Like you just the only thing you even see that the parents like are alluded to being dead is that they're in a photo once and then I'm like just like this is so just I can only blame tradition really for that being the case, that that's even in the movie, but yeah, Big Hero Six was like a time like where like the whole like the dead parents thing I thought was just absolutely gratuitous. And just like just like a like a like a check box, like a thing that they had to check off the box to finish the movie. Like the parents have to be dead. They live with Aunt Cass or whatever her name was, and 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 then that that's like that that's, that stuck with me as something that kind of peeved me when like watching. Like really, this doesn't matter to anything. Why do they have to? I mean, just. Ugh. And there's such even cases where. At least I get it. Okay. This is another weird case, like, single kind of parent or guardianship deal. Well, guardianship... Okay, it's guardianship if you watch the English dub, because they cut the scenes. Okay, so, um... If you ever watch the Duel Monsters Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, du Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters, like, the first... Yu-Gi-Oh! Well, not the first Yu-Gi-Oh! Because there's Season Zero, which is something else. But the, the Yu-Gi-Oh! everyone knows, with, you know, Yu-Gi with the hair and the... Tar of the cards and all that mess. So... He lives with his grandpa, so you think his parents are dead, but they're not, and here's why. His mom exists. She's in the manga, and she's in the anime, but in English dub, her only speaking scene is cut. Though she has a, non like a couple non-speaking scenes, but her character is so nondescript that you'd have no idea who she was and assume she was... She, 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 she's in two hospital scenes with the, the grandpa in season one, and if you had no idea who she was, you just assume she's a nurse. And what's odd is because those two scenes occur before you know... Like, before she even has a voice role in the, in the original dub, like in the Japanese dub, she's just there in these two scenes. And unless you've watched the manga... Like, unless you've read the manga or saw that scene later... You have no idea who this character was, or if she, or she was even important. But that's Yuki's mom, apparently. And then I think... The dad's never around, but I think um, I read somewhere that the, the actual creator of the manga clarified that the dad is alive. He's just away on business a lot, so that's why you never see him. So he does have parents. Yugi Moto does have parents. They're just in cutscenes, or just not around, so... Yeah. <laughs> But Yu Gi Oh! Bridge got a lot of mileage out of that. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I find that just a very interesting bit of trivia, and that they're just, again, it's kind of like a budgetary reason, like they, or like a, a writing reason. Like they, like they, like the mom and Yu Gi Oh! didn't have a plot purpose, um, ever really. Like the scene, I think how the scene went down that she was, that was cut is, um, Yugi's at home, and you know he was talking to the pharaoh, and like he like Yugi leaves his room, and the mom's like, "Were you talking to yourself?" And she's he's like, "No, I wasn't. I was just doing something." And it was like, and, I and that's the only scene she has where she speaks. Star Two Fifty Two says, "Wow, yeah." <laughs> That's my big spiel on single parents and animation. Single parents for, bu for budgetary reasons and tax purposes.
making good progress on the line art here. Startude 52 says, that's wild. Like, granted, I understand, but still, you o <laughs> you've opened my eyes. Oh, <laughs> that's sweet of you to say, but I'll just, I'm just kind of rambling about this and that. That kind of, kind of been crossing my mind. I mean, I, I do love talking about cartoons and, and animation. Um, yeah, I do need to make more videos where I talk about that sort of thing. More, it's like scripted content. I'm just, I'm just so lazy when it comes to making my scripted content. But I've got to do it. Oh. I was just kind of thinking about one of my <laughs> New Year's resolution from last year, because someone was mentioning it. To, like I was in a, I was in a group and we were talking about New Year's resolutions like early, and then I thought, oh, I can't really remember mine, and then it didn't strike me until afterwards. I remembered it, and I, I'm pretty sure my New Year's resolution, at least for last year, maybe even the year before that, was to make more scripted content. Ugh. I still got to do that. In time. I did do some movie reviews early this year, especially in the summertime. I kind of stopped after Jurassic World. Movie sucks so bad, I just kind of... Fallen Kingdom specifically. Those movies, I, I really didn't like that movie. I, I mean, I was harsh in my review. I believe, I mean, I was justifiably harsh, because that movie had so many dumb things happen. Um, Watch the review. I mean, I, hopefully, you get, you get a kick out of it. I had a lot of fun in that one. Then I didn't. I want. I should have reviewed a Star Is Born. Um, I love a Star Is Born, so you know, just I highly recommend watching a Star Is Born. That was really good. Um, not just because of Lady Gaga and I adore her, but she. It was really good movie. And I was thinking about this recently too. Okay, another movie I really like that kind of is similar, ish. These just kind of remind me because it was like a romantic comedy with kind of a lot of showbiz themes to it. Um, La La Land, which I did enjoy a lot from two from almost two years ago. Um, but one thing, I like Star Wars Born better, mainly for this reason. Why, why I like it better than La La Land is that so you have a female lead and your male lead, and in Star Wars Born, I was very invested in both the male and female lead. But in La La Land, I only cared about the female lead and um, Emma Stone's character. I did not care about um, Ryan Gosling's character in that movie. Like, I only liked him in scenes that involved Emily, not Emily, that involved Emma Stone's character. Because like she was just radiant and very engaging and very good, and and she had a much better um, story arc too. His I did. I didn't think was very good. But as Star is Born, I wanted to know what happened to both um, Lady Gaga's character and Bradley Cooper's character like from the star. I was like, I'm in it with these two characters. I want to know where they're going and what happens. So, yeah, that's, that's the big reason why I, I like A Star is Born better than La La Land. I design it. Uh, okay. Oops. So back on the subject of um, single parents and cartoons, I and mean, this is not specifically single parents, but it's, it's kind of sort of related. Is um, there's this trope called nephewism, and that relates to um, characters that 
aren't married and are, are, are either unmarried or single and definitely don't have kids, but have nephews that pretty much serve the function of as being their kids. Good example is um, Huey, Dewey, and Louie in relation to Donald Duck. Like he's unmarried and he's just sometimes dates Daisy, but he has no kids. But those kid, but the those two nephews are always around, and they have the same kind of um, voice inflections. And yeah, so it's kind that's kind of like a related trope to the no parents thing in a way. Like these, everyone has like uncle, like nieces and nephews. Oh, this is. <laughs> Oh, speaking of, this is an example where it's like an uncle character of niece and nephew. Um, so that's kind of, I guess that was a subconscious kind of reference to a trope there, kind of drawing that out. Yeah. Let's sketch a line here. Star Dude Fifty Two says, "Oh, who's the uncle in this picture? Oh, this uncle, um." This is uh, Andy, this uh, mouse character that belongs to a friend of mine. That's Andy. He's a mouse with gray fur. He's a field mouse. So, he's a really good friend of mine. I draw this character a lot for my friend. Um, yeah. Okay. Whoa, getting a bit sleepy here. An eventful day. Uh, when's the stream been going? Let me check that. Going for uh, close to an hour and a half. Okay. Well, I think that's a good place to stop for now. Um, with the line art here. This one's pretty much done. I want to keep it in flat color. But I want to see if I can make a get kind of a bit of a background. So I'll probably have this one done for to post tomorrow, and this I'll keep working on. Uh, I think I'm gonna call it a night for now. Just want to thank everyone so much for watching uh, live or on U Twitch or YouTube later. Uh, I want to thank um, Stardew52 for the great conversation. It's always a pleasure. I hope all all of you continue to watch and comment. Uh, it's really helps keep keep me going here in all these little projects and yeah um hopefully I can keep on get some more streams out at least a stream or two out before Christmas yeah oh Star 52 says cute I've been meaning to ask if I can draw you sometime I'll chat with you on discord uh talk to you later get you. oh yeah sure absolutely hit me up whenever you like all right so thank you so much for watching everyone, I'll see you all next time.